Dear students of the class 10, welcome to this video class. In this video lesson, we are going to discuss about the most important and expected multiple choice questions of the chapter metals and the non-metals. Question number one, which of the following pair of metals are good conductors of heat? Generally, all metals are good conductors of heat and electricity. But there are some metals which are the very good conductors of the heat. So such the best conductors of the heat, the metals are silver and copper. Because of the property of this copper, this copper is used in the making of the cooking utensils. Usually the bottom of the vessels are made by the copper coated. Question number two, identify the correct statement of the following. There are four statements. Option A, gallium has high melting point. It is a wrong statement because gallium has low melting point. Option B, iodine is a lustrous metal. Of course, iodine is a lustrous, but it is a non-metal. That's why option B is also wrong. Option D, bromine is a liquid metal. Of course, bromine is a liquid, but it is a non-metal. So let's come to the option C. Mercury is liquid metal at its room temperature. You can notice the image here. Here, the mercury can be poured from one vessel to the another vessel. That means mercury is it is a liquid metal at the room temperature. That's why option C is the right answer. Question number three, examples for ampoteric oxides are, dear students, the meaning of ampoteric oxides means they are the metal oxides which can react with both acids and bases to produce the salt and water. So such important ampoteric oxides are, with that is the aluminum oxide and the zinc oxide. That is option D is the right answer. You can notice the images of the aluminum oxide and the zinc oxide. Question number four, which of the following metal oxide produces alkali? Dear students, as you know that the meaning of alkali means the water soluble bases are called as the alkalis. So usually sodium oxide and the potassium oxide when dissolved in water, they produce as the bases which are nothing but the alkalis because those two are the water soluble bases. So out of these four options, option C is the right answer. That is the sodium oxide is the right answer. This sodium oxide dissolves in water to produce as a base which is the water soluble. That's why sodium oxide is the right answer. Option C. Number five, which of the following metal reacts vigorously with water? Dear students, there are some metals which can react very vigorously with water. So the example for such metals are that is potassium and sodium. So these sodium and potassium reacts with water and it produces the fire. That's why these two metals are stored in the kerosene. For this question, the right option is the option C. Potassium is the right answer. number six which of the following metal metal reacts with nitric acid to produce hydrogen gas dear students you know that nitric acid is a strong oxidizing agent whenever the nitric acid reacts with a metal generally the nitric acid produces the water molecule and the salts but there are some metals which can react with the nitric acid to produce the hydrogen gas only. So such metals are magnesium and another is the manganese. So out of four options like iron, magnesium, potassium and aluminium. So magnesium is a metal which can react with the nitric acid to produce the hydrogen gas. So the right answer is the option B is the magnesium. Question number seven. Arrange the following metals in the increasing order of their reactivity. Aluminium, iron, magnesium and zinc. 
Dear students, whenever you get such type of question, you are supposed to write down the reactivity series of the metals in the descending order. So after writing this one, you can easily answer such type of questions. So by observing this reactivity series, it's very clear iron, zinc, aluminum and magnesium. See, so this is the correct answer for this option. That is the iron is the reactive metal. Zinc is the more reactive than the iron. Aluminum is the more reactive than the zinc and magnesium is more reactive than aluminum. So this is the increasing order of the these metals. That's why option B is the right answer for this question. Question number eight, which of the following pair of elements combine to produce ionic compounds? Dear students, usually ionic compounds are formed between the metals and non-metals by transferring of the electrons. So now you observe the four options. First look here, sodium it is the metal, whereas the chlorine it is the non-metal. So here sodium gives an electron to the chlorine and it produces the sodium chloride which is the ionic compound. So out of four options, the right option is the option C, sodium and chlorine. They too can combine together to produce the ionic compound. That means in between the metal and non-metal, usually ionic compounds are formed. That's why option C is the right answer. Question number nine, in which of the following solvent sodium chloride gets soluble? Dear students, sodium chloride, it is an ionic compound. As you know that the ionic compounds dissolves in water and the ionic compounds do not dissolve in organic solvents like kerosene, petrol, alcohol, ether or benzene. So out of these four options, water is the right answer in which the sodium chloride can dissolve. So option B is the right answer. Question number 10, roasting means. Dear students, you must familiar roasting means it is related to the sulphide wars. Whenever we heat the sulphide wars in the presence of excess oxygen, this process is called as the roasting. So out of four options, option C is the right answer that is strongly heating the sulphide wars in the presence of excess oxygen. That's why option C is the right answer. Question number 11. By the process of calcination, which of the following ore is processed? Dear students, calcination means heating of the carbonate ore in the absence of or in the shortage of the oxygen. So you might have noticed in the rural India, the limestone is heated to get the quick lime. That means heating of the carbonate ore in the absence or in the shortage of the oxygen, that's called as the calcination. So out of four options, you can notice here option C is the carbonate ore. So this is the right answer for this question. Question number 12, the application of, that means use of thermite process. Dear students, in the thermal process, as you know that it is a displacement reaction with liberation of the huge amount of the heat energy. So because of this heat energy, the metal will be turns into the molten state. So that molten metal is used for the welding purpose. So the main application of this process is welding of the railway tracks, also the in the repairing of the industrial equipment. So option B is the right answer. Dear students, you can notice here, here the pupil are making the welding for the railway tracks by using the thermal process. So option B is the right answer for this question. Number 13, in the process of electrolytic refining of copper, anode is made with. Dear students, first you notice the diagram here. So this is the purification of the copper by the electrolytic refining. As you know that the anode is made by the impure copper 
and this cathode is made by the pure copper so here the question is regarding the anode so the right answer is it is the impure copper so the right answer is option b impure copper question number 14 silver articles on corrosion produces black coat a layer of black color this black coat is chemically called what so first you notice dear students so these are the silver coins so they turn into the black color because this silver metal reacts with the sulfur compounds which are present in the atmosphere and they produce as the silver sulfide which is a black in color so the coat which is formed on the silver articles this is the silver sulfide so here there are four options here option b is the right answer that is silver sulfide question number 15 soldering wire is an alloy of dash dear students the meaning of alloy as you know that it is a homogeneous mixture of metal and metal or metal with non-metal dear students first you notice here this is a soldering wire this is an alloy so this alloy is made by the two different metals that is lead and tin that's why the right option is the option d is the correct answer that is lead and tin dear students so this is all about the very important 15 questions of the chapter metals and the non-metals so in the next video we are going to discuss another important chapter of the class 10 science so thank you for watching this video